Hi, uh, I'm Sophie, probably a lot of you uh, I've already talked about. Um, I'm going to talk about NixOS on this piece of hardware, my mobile phone. Uh, I've been using it for a couple of months now as my primary mobile phone, as my daily driver. And today I'd like to show you all uh, what works, what doesn't. Yeah. So, why am I even doing this? Uh, back in 2019, I uh, cr supported um, the crowdfunding campaign by Purism. Uh, it took nearly four years for me to actually get this because, well, things happened, you all know it. And yeah, I just tried it out with the default POS, with Fosh as the, the desktop environment for a little while. But I'll be honest, I don't really like Fosh. The, the UI just didn't really click with me. So I wanted to try out other desktop environments just to see how well they work. And of course, if you're switching between desktop environments on a device where you don't really have that good of an input to configure things, yeah, NixOS is like the tool to use because I can just build my configuration and as soon as I've yeah, built like three, four different configurations, I can just switch easily between them and see what, how well they work. And of course, well, I was curious. I was using NixOS everywhere else by that point, so how well would NixOS work on a mobile phone? What are we using? The Librem 5, for those of you who don't know it, it's like this, I can compare it with another more standard mobile phone. It's like similar size. I don't know if you can see it on the camera probably. And yeah, it's just, it's really thick. It's like 12 millimeters thick without like any kind of casing or something. It's not the most comfortable phone, but yeah, we're working with a quad core CPU. Um, ARCH64 uh, Linux is the NixOS system we're using here. And yeah, the CPU isn't really very usable for large Nix builds. Also, three gigabytes of RAM, that's just, if you're running NixOS, no, that won't work for builds. Uh, Nix Evil actually sometimes was out of memory killed on this phone. Um, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Also, 32 gigabytes of storage. Yes, you can add an SD card, but with 32 gigabytes of storage, there isn't really a lot of space for just comparing different things, for installing lots of packages. And I was actually trying to, um, you, to, to, to project these slides using the phone, but just Building the slides on this phone, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see the screenshot in a bit. Um, the, the most striking feature of this, in my opinion, is it wasn't meant to be like powerful hardware. It wasn't meant to be like normal phone hardware. It's meant to be as free and open as possible for a phone. Um, the modem is one of the notable components which actually has a firmware blob, but it's entirely isolated over USB and there's a kill switch on the side, so you can turn off power to the modem entirely. And yeah, that's the hardware we're actually working with here. So, how did I get started? I actually found an existing pull request to NixOS hardware. And there was some groundwork in there. Uh, for example, there was already uh, work for on, on Purism's kernel and U-boot fork. And it didn't actually work out of the box with this pull request I found. So I was tinkering uh, a little bit with that. And at some point, I actually got everything to build correctly. I updated the packages to the mo most recent versions released by Purism upstream. And, well, at some point I got it to flash, I got it to boot. I actually had to experiment with file systems a lot because 
ext4 as a root partition doesn't really work that well um, because I don't know, the eMMC chip might be somewhat broken on my specific phone. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. So in the end, I settled on F2FS, which does corrupt sometimes because it's not journaling. But yeah, well, that's just what happens, I guess. Once it did start, though, it's just, yeah, it's just one line of Nix config. You can see it there. And yeah, you're suddenly in Plasma Mobile with a lot of packages installed. Plasma Mobile just kind of works. It's packaged in Nix packages. And once you get Nix OS booting, it's basically one line of config to actually start a desktop environment other than Fosh. Everything I've done so far has been merged just like less than a week ago. And yeah, so if you own a Librem 5, well, you can just try to uh, get this PR on your phone and, well, run NixOS. So, the screenshot I promised you, of course, I had to run NeoFetch. The screen is too small, sadly. So this was actually run over SSH because, well, it's NixOS. Of course, you can start an SSH daemon. And yeah. Um, Host is detected correctly. The kernel I'm running there is actually not merged to NixOS hardware yet. That's still an open pull request. Um, and you can see I have a somewhat fancy shell. And disk usage is at 92%, which, yeah, no, there's not really a lot of space to actually build something. It took me a while, and I think the garbage collect after I deleted some GC routes took like half an hour to get back to like 60% or something. But yeah, um, there isn't really enough space. So, more hardware specific things. What works, what doesn't. Um, that's like the, the first boot. Touch screen, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, on-screen keyboard, um, most audio things and text messages just like worked fine, worked in Plasma Mobile basically out of the box. Um, what was broken? Audio during calls and audio for like alarms and a timer or something. Uh, GPS didn't work and um, multi-monitor output is another thing that kind of doesn't work. There seems to be an issue with the um, with, with the uh, HDMI chip in use in the phone. And UI elements are somewhat broken too. Um, the, the biggest issue is that a lot of the apps you're using are just made for Linux in general, not for like Linux on a phone. So settings, menus, dialogues in some cases, just generally apps just don't really fit on the screen. And if you're rotating the screen, then, well, they still don't fit because you can't scroll. And yeah. Uh, another thing is a lot of um, existing apps, for example, a terminal, expects like the system to handle keyboard input. But, well, there is no hardware keyboard, so you don't have like a full-size keyboard, you only have the on-screen keyboard. The one that Plasma ships with does not have a control key, so cancelling something in the terminal with control C doesn't work. Um, yeah, you kind of have to connect an USB-C dock or something and yeah, use that to connect a keyboard and then you have a control key and then you cancel, then you can cancel things. So getting things working, the camera uh, that required packaging fork of megapixels, which is an existing Linux mobile app for camera support. Uh, Purism uh, has forked it to millipixels and added support for the Librem 5 hardware. And it also required uh, configuration because the kernel Purism builds already contains the necessary configuration, but NixOS actually overrides this configuration in its build process. So I have to manually set it again for, for the build Linux call in um, Nix packages. 
But yeah, camera works now. Uh, that's also part of the already merged pull request. GPS, I'm still tinkering with. Uh, I actually got that working just last night. Um, that requires some configuration for GNSS share and GeoClue, just two services involved there. And the time to first fix is still pretty long because there's no way to get to the assisted GPS data yet. So it takes 12 and a half minutes to download the entire GPS data from the satellites. And yeah, it, the first fix will take 12 and a half minutes at least. And 12 and a half minutes of perfect reception. So in a city, it's probably more like half an hour, if you're unlucky, even multiple hours. The modem audio, uh, so yeah, that actually requires using pulse audio. With Pipewire currently there's no way, as, at least as far as I know, to make sure that um, the, the modem is configured as audio, sync and source. So there's, yeah, there's a configuration from, from uh, Purism in upstream. Um, to configure Pulse Audio to use the modem itself as uh, sync and source. And yeah, once I switched my configuration to force Pipewire off and use Pulse Audio instead and added that configuration, well, yeah, modem audio just works now. There's uh, call audio D as a daemon to actually route that correctly during calls. So yeah, phone calls are working now. And that's actually a photo of me during a chaos communication camp, just so just a couple of weeks ago, where I was getting calls working for the first time. So yeah, I was uh, actually having uh, the Librem 5 in one hand and called the event phone external number to my deck and was sitting there basically for, for hours with like two phones in hand and just constantly holding both phones uh, to my ear and hoping that things would work. And yeah, that was the moment it actually, I got it working for the first time. So, um, what am I still working on? As I said, uh, I just got a GPS generally working just last night. Um, I'm still working on assisted GPS and I'm still working on um, making modem audio better because currently there sometimes is an issue where you start a call and for whatever reason, I think it's a race condition somewhere, the modem audio is just muted. So you have to manually go into the settings while you're on a call and unmute the modem and yeah, to actually get audio during the call. Otherwise, you won't hear uh, the other side and the other side will not hear you. I've also experimented with uh, other desktop environments, as I said, for example, SXMO. I'm not sure, maybe some of you know it. It's basically Sway and uh, combined with a lot of shell scripts and some other packages to make a mobile uh, desktop environment. And yeah, packaging just a bunch of random shell scripts use, used as glue between a lot of packages is not exactly uh, easy to package for NixOS. So yeah, that's a thing I'm actually still trying to get working well. Um, I'm also still working on Waydroid. Because, well, as we all know, there aren't really a lot of apps available for Linux that work on a mobile phone. So maybe just having an emergency Android emulation layer to run Android apps would be cool. But yeah, on three gigabytes of RAM and just four CPU cores, while today's modern Android phones have like eight, sometimes up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, that's not exactly going to work fine. And I haven't yet actually tried uh, running Waydroid. Um, but I'm still, uh, that's, that's still a thing I'm uh, trying to get to, uh, to work sometime. So if you want to help me, you can find me some of those and you of course also um, at the NixCon hackathon tomorrow 
just, I don't know, I'll be here. Um, maybe if you want to help, maybe if you want to know more, just ask and, well, we, may, we might see how far we can get. And now it's time for questions. Transparent, I only have two left. One left. Uh, I was wondering if you have been looking into the mobile Nixos uh, project and adding support for the Librem to that one, because it can run a lot of like uh, Android phones and the Pine phone and stuff. Yeah, um, mobile Nixos is another repository just for basically Nix code, I guess, and um, as far as I know, mobile Nixos. Uh, uses a lot of things from Postmark to S to actually get it running on devices. And I think just the the Pine Phone, the Pine Tab, and the OnePlus 6, uh, 6T are like the, the actually supported or well supported devices by Mobile NixOS. And there was a question whether my pull request um, should be merged to NixOS hardware or Mobile NixOS. And yeah, because, well, basically because Samuel didn't really have a strong opinion on this, as far as uh, I can tell, he didn't really answer. Um, it was merged to Nexus hardware, but um, yeah, both projects are basically hardware support, and yeah, it's it doesn't really matter as far as I know which one to merge this to. I have more pox, by the way. <laughs> I've been restocked. Sure. <laughs> um, especially for getting Wade uh, Ride working on the Librem 5, um, you're kind of limited by hardware. Um, yes. What are your hopes like for another platform with like more RAM, or do you think you can actually get RAM usage down that much that you can really run it reliably? I don't think I can actually get RAM usage uh, down enough to get a modern Android running, but maybe with um, an older version of Android, maybe uh, with some uh, more stock uh, distribution image uh, to run in, in Waydroid, it could work. I'm not entirely sure yet. And of course, I hope that there will be like actually more Linux phones and maybe with better hardware and like especially more RAM. That's like, <laughs> that's actually the, the biggest issue I had with this. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, did you experiment with full disk encryption on the phone? Um, I actually did experiment with it a little bit. But I was uh, in the early stages reflashing it so much that um, yeah, I just at some point abandoned it because it was too much work to actually set up every time. And in the end, uh, I haven't really moved from what I'm running now to disk encryption, but it generally works. Um, do you think that NixOS could be made to work with uh, some sort of hardware abstraction layer like Helium in the future to open, like, to, to make it work on like a wider range of devices? I guess it could be made to work, but I'm not really sure why that would have to be done, because uh, the 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 biggest part here is getting the kernel running. It's it's a custom kernel fork uh, by Purism, and once that's uh, packaged and built for Nix, and once that's booting, everything else is just Nix. Like there isn't really a lot of hardware abstraction that needs to be done. This. Like m most of the things I'm I'm doing here, for example, the, the the GPS thing, there are already services like GeoClue that uh, are like the the, the standard um, th that all apps hook into. GeoClue exposes the DBus uh, service, 
and apps that need location, whether that's your browser, whether that's like uh, navigation or maps or, or whatever, just asks GeoClue and GeoClue provides the abstraction for uh, communicating with the GPS device, with the, with the actual receiver. So yeah, these, these things basically exist in Linux. There, there isn't really that much hardware abstraction uh, left at that point, in my opinion. Uh, I would like to know if there's a, there is a wide choice of bootloaders available on Librem 5, because uh, each time you want to boot to an older kernel on a computer, you can use a keyboard. But on Librem 5, I suppose that it is more natural to use the volume keys or, the, or a touch screen. Um, there's currently, as far as I know, just the, the U-Boot fork by Purism. Uh, other bootloaders like Upstream U-Boot or Tau Boot or something currently don't work on the Librem 5. And the current version of U-Boot used for that fork doesn't support actually selecting which uh, generation to boot into. So you will not be able to boot into an older configuration. as as, at least as of now. Uh, yeah, just wanted to further elaborate what I meant with hardware abstraction layer. Uh, yeah. So, Helium is basically a, an abstraction layer between Android type drivers, like which already exist for a quite, ran uh, quite wide range of uh, like consumer devices because of projects like Linux OS. And uh, Helium basically just takes sort of the lower half of Android and makes those um, uh, drivers accessible to uh, like mainline Linux stuff. It's mainly used by Ubuntu Touch. So um, uh, yeah, so it runs on basically every Android device there is out there. So d do you think that sort of ma well, of, obviously it requires some massive restructuring of uh, the file system hierarchy. Do you think it could be made to work with NixOS? I'm actually not sure that's that would, as you already said, be an extremely big project with a lot of restructuring, but I I mean, if it works with any other Linux distribution, why would it not work with NixOS? But getting it to work with like Linux in general, I'm not sure, just, yeah. I don't think I can't. Re uh, I, I can really say a lot of uh, things about that. All right, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much. Give it up, please, for Sophie.